Hi, boys and girls. Let's review our sounds one more time. St, stark, stack, stamp, sp, speak, sport, spoke, str, strap, strong, strand, and spl, splash, spleen, splint. Hope you've been working on these words this week. They're kind of tough. All right. Okay, so yesterday we heard about the preacher coming, and Abe kept getting in trouble for how he would preach. If you preach, you try to talk in a convincing way and get others to share your opinions and your viewpoints. Okay, so let's continue with our biography on Abraham Lincoln by Augusta Stevenson. This chapter is called Abe Thinks of Others. One day, Abe went to the creek to fish. He didn't fish with his hands now. He had a pole and a line. On the bank stood four boys. They were looking at something on the ground and they were laughing and shouting. I wonder what they are looking at, Abe said to himself. He went to them and looked over their heads. There on the ground was a large mud turtle. Its shell had been broken. It was trying to crawl, but it couldn't. It could only jerk and quiver. Abe saw that it was suffering and he was very angry. He knew that one of the boys had hurt it. He pushed the boys back. Stand back, he said. Let me have that turtle. You can't have it, said the largest boy. It's my turtle. I found it. You broke its back, didn't you, said Abe. Yes, I did, said the boy. I wanted to see how it would crawl. I knew it would look funny. I wonder how you would crawl if I broke your back, said Abe. I wonder if you would look funny. The boy saw that Abe was very angry and he was afraid of him. He knew how strong Abe was because he had seen him wrestle. So he didn't say another word. He didn't laugh again either. The other boys stopped laughing too. They were all afraid of Abe. Abe picked up the turtle gently and put it into the creek. Then Abe said, boys, God made that mud turtle. Do you think he wanted you to hurt it? The boys hung their heads. Do you think God would laugh at its poor broken back? The boys still looked at the ground. They were ashamed to look at Abe. He went on, do you think God laughed when it quivered and jerked? There was silence for a moment. Then a boy said, I am sorry I laughed, Abe. I am sorry I laughed, said another boy. I didn't know a turtle suffered, said the largest boy. It's nothing but an animal. Animals do suffer just as much as we do, said Abe. I found a dog once with a broken leg. It was crying just like a child. No child could have suffered more. I will never hurt an animal again, said the largest boy. If I do, you may lick me, Abe. That is just what I will do, said Abe. He meant what he said, and the boys knew that he meant it. Hunting wild turkeys. One day, Abe was busy with his axe, splitting some rails. Two boys came along with their guns over their shoulders. Where are you going, Abe asked. Hunting, the bigger boy answered. There are lots of wild turkeys in the woods. Why don't you get a gun and come with us, asked another boy. Abe leaned on his axe and thought for a moment. He didn't know whether he wanted to go hunting or not. He, he knew how to use a gun but he didn't enjoy hunting. He hated to kill or even hurt any living thing. Still, it would be fun to go with the other boys. At last, he said, I've never hunted turkeys, but I'd like to go with you. I must finish splitting these rails first, though. The boys waited. It wasn't long before the rails were all split and, neat and piled neatly. Then Abe got a gun from the cabin and went with the boys. They were careful where they stepped. They knew that any noise would frighten the birds and animals. They had not gone far when Abe stopped suddenly. Without saying a word, he pointed to two turkeys feeding in the underbrush. You shoot, Abe, one boy whispered. You saw them first. Abe took careful aim and fired. One turkey toppled over and the other flew off. You got it, shouted the boys, and they ran toward the turkey. Abe felt as if his feet were rooted to the ground. He didn't want to look at the bird he had shot. Come on, Abe, called one of the boys. See what a big turkey you shot. I bet it weighs at least 20 pounds. Abe walked slowly to the turkey. The wings of the, birds were of the bird were still flapping feebly. It's too bad we didn't shoot the other one, the bigger boy said. But turkeys usually stay in flocks. There should be others around if that shot didn't frighten them too much. Pick up your bird, Abe, said the other boy. Probably we'll have to do some walking before we find more turkeys. Abe knew that his mother would be glad to have the turkey. His father often shot different kinds of wild game to help out the food supply. This was the first time that Abe had ever killed anything. He had to make himself pick up the turkey. Its wings flapped a few times against its shoulder. Then they were still. 
Abe walked along behind the other boys. They saw several flocks of turkeys. Before long, Abe's friends had shot two turkeys apiece. Abe did not fire another shot. Now I'm gonna draw a conclusion here. We know that this was Abe's first time to shoot a turkey and that he shot one. He isn't celebrating even though he shot the first one. I'm thinking that he didn't like doing it. When the boys urged him to shoot, he just shook his head. I can't do it, he said. This is the first time I ever killed anything with a gun. I hope this is the last time too. After that, when the other boys went into the woods with their guns, Abe stayed home. He knew that it was sometimes it was necessary to kill wild game for food, but he couldn't do it. If the family needed wild game, someone else would have to shoot it. An accident. Another time, Abe was going into the woods to chop down a tree. May I go with you, Abe? Matilda called from the doorway. Mrs. Lincoln put her hand on Matilda's shoulder before Abe could answer. Not today, Matilda, she said. I need you to help me. Besides, I don't want you bothering Abe while he is working with a sharp ax. Abe liked to be out in the woods and he liked to chop down trees. He sang at the top of his voice as he lifted an ax over his head. He worked and worked. Abe was singing so loudly that he didn't hear Matilda come up behind him. Now Matilda knew just what she was going to do. She had watched her brothers play. She crept up softly behind Abe. He had just raised his ax high over his head. Quick as a cat, Matilda leaped on Abe's back. She put one hand on each of his shoulders. Her knees were in the middle of Abe's back. Abe whirled around, still holding the ax. Matilda tumbled to the ground. As she fell, her knee hit the sharp blade of the ax. Abe's face grew pale when he saw the blood running down Matilda's leg. He dropped the ax and bent over his sister. Oh, Matilda, I've cut your knee, he said. Matilda was quite a big girl, but she couldn't keep from crying now. Oh, Abe, it hurts. It hurts, she sobbed. Abe could see that the cut was fairly deep. We should bandage your knee and get you home, he said. And here's a picture of her sneaking up on him in the woods. His hands were shaking as he tore a strip off his shirt and bound up the knee. He felt very sorry for Matilda. I know it hurts awfully, he said, but I'm sure it will be all right. Matilda, stop crying now. Don't look so worried, Abe. It isn't your fault that I got hurt. It's mine. I shouldn't have come out to the woods and surprised you. Abe tried to smile. Well, I can't help being worried. I hate to see anyone get hurt. I'll carry you home now. Abe walked carefully. He didn't want the cut on Matilda's knee to start bleeding again. As he walked, he began to worry about his mother. If she saw him carrying Matilda, she would be frightened, he knew. Matilda said Abe as they came inside of the cabin. Do you think you could walk the rest of the way? I know your knee hurts, but I don't want to scare mother. Oh yes, said Matilda. I'm sure I can walk now. I should have thought about frightening mother myself. You always think about others, Abe. I wish I could be more like that. Well, I'm older than you are, said Abe as he put Matilda on her feet. Matilda leaned on Abe and together they went toward the cabin. When Mrs. Lincoln saw them coming, she rushed to meet them. She was half angry and half worried. Matilda had disobeyed her and she didn't like that. At the same time, she was worried when she saw that Abe was coming home with Matilda. Matilda, she said, I told you not to go into the wood. Please don't scold her mother, said Abe. She just didn't think she has had an accident and I think perhaps she has already been punished enough. When Mrs. Lincoln saw the cut on Matilda's knee, she agreed with Abe. She didn't scold Matilda, but gently took care of the gash. You are lucky to have a brother like Abe, she said to Matilda. He always understands how the other person feels. And that's where we're going to stop for today.